，您正在收看的是《新西兰报》，中心之窗试点。
the various endeavours over the last two years that Aotearoa has been enduring like the rest of the world this pandemic, from uh, the health workers, from uh, those who have provided a feed, love, care, support, welfare, every single element has helped New Zealand, helped the people of New Zealand come through this pandemic in the way that we can. It has been extraordinarily tough, but I know that I won't be the only one that will be looking overseas at the experience of many other countries. And when we look alongside those other countries, we can see that although it has been incredibly tough here, we have still fared so much better than, than many. And I do believe that that's because from the very outset, we prioritise two really important things. Looking after our people, first and foremost, and listening to the science and the experts who we help us do that. So thank you. Thank you for the mahi. Thank you for all of the work that's been happening. This has never been an endeavour that's solely been about the government. It's been about community. It's been about me. And it's been about the work that the likes of Ngāti Pāti have been a part of. I also want to take the opportunity, as did Minister Hinare, to acknowledge uh, uh, the two doctors that we have here, Dr. Russell and Morgan, here today as well. They are uh, emblematic of the support that we've had as a government to have the very best advice possible on making some of the really critical and hard decisions that we've had to make. But some decisions, of course, have been easy, and the provision of vaccines is obviously a no-brainer. But for us, it's about making sure that people have people they can trust uh, and hear um, the opinions and the advice of people they can trust. And so the willingness of our experts to put themselves out there, to make themselves available, to share their wisdom and knowledge has just been invaluable. So a huge thank you um, for being those role models, being there and, and answering the questions that people have and giving people the confidence to make decisions, particularly on behalf of their state. I know that ultimately we all just want the best for our whānau, for our tamariki, for our Aotearoa. Uh, and that where some people have concerns or fears, I hope that they know that all of the advice that's coming forward is coming from the best possible place and with the same desires that most of us share and that is looking out for one another. Today's a really uh, big day. It's not a big day just because I'm getting a booster. <laughs> um, today is a big day because it marks another milestone in our program. Today's a day that people are able to book their booster from four months from the time that they had uh, their second um, dose. Uh, of course, since the beginning of January, people have been able to walk in, and they have in their thousands. And it's been excellent to see those numbers come up again. Uh, often over 40,000 a day coming in to get their booster. And we're now in a position where half of those eligible New Zealanders have now received their booster shot, which is absolutely fantastic, and we want to keep that going. We're in the position that by the end of February, we can have 82% of New Zealanders having received their booster shot. Now, we want to make that a reality, though. We particularly want to focus on our over 65s, those who may already have pre-existing conditions that may make them unwell, and those that we know uh, are more likely to be vulnerable to COVID-19. So getting in there and targeting our campaigns, again, Māori, Pacific, and our older New Zealanders has to be at the centre of everything we're doing right now. And the reason for that is that we know that we've been blessed to have a summer. Everyone has worked incredibly hard to keep Omicron at bay. But the reality is, it's a case of we not in. But we have something that others haven't had, and that is the opportunity to boost before it arrives. And that is why it's critical that we just move with as much pace as we can. So that's what I want to encourage everyone today. Two doses, two doses is great, but for Omicron, that third dose, that booster, is boosting people's immunity and preparing, better preparing them for uh, what we know is inevitable. And I do want people to know as well that as much as, yes, there's a lot of coverage around it being a, a milder disease, it is a disease nonetheless that will affect some people badly. <coughs> we have upwards of 200 people in ICU in New South Wales. And that is a number that would put incredible strain on them and it would on us when we'd experience the same. So the more people we have with their booster shot, the more we're able to protect their health care, protect their health and protect their well-being. The other big thing today, of course, is the ability to vaccinate our five twenty-year-olds, our Tamariki. And I know a lot of parents.
parents have been waiting for this opportunity. They've been desperate to ensure that their children have the same protection of others. So we have that paediatric dose uh, available now to children. Um, it is specific for those five to 11 year olds in terms of the dosing. It has of course undergone trials and we waited until our experts said yes, we believe this is the right thing to do for New Zealand. And so that is now what we are undertaking. So I hope that Fano will get together, get their boosters done and bring their children in at the same time. A really critical point I want to make though, this is a decision for parents and caregivers in Fano. Uh, and so it will be up to them to make that decision. And so if you have questions, please reach out to your GP, your health provider, or look for some of the expert advice that's been provided. You'll find a lot of it um, uh, online. I can point you to Dr. Jim Russell in particular. Um, but please, um, make sure you give up that consideration in a really timely way. Those shots are now available for our time and It would be great to make sure that they have that ability before they go back into Kura. So, again, I'm going to finish where I started with a huge uh, I hope that you continue to see Farno through the door because every person that comes through is another person who has greater protection and I know that's what we all want. Noreira, Dina Koka, Dina Koka, Dina Koka, Dina Koka, Dina Koka. I don't know. I don't think we've passed, we've probably passed the required yeah. I think maybe one from us is enough. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
examples of being able to look after each other well. And you've created that platform. I do want to thank um, Anthony. Anthony's the one that we bring on a Saturday morning when nobody else will pick up the phone. That's Anthony. Uh, because it's the only time he's not in Zoom meetings and he's got all of us uh, giving us all of the hints and all of the things that we need to be able to pivot. Because part of the thing is here, we need to be part of the decision making here. If we're going to get in front of this, we can't be reacting all the time. And it's through, I suppose, the great advice that sits within uh, the government that we're able to do that. So I would encourage that that happens again. That's not by chance. That's by design that we are leading with you, uh, not trying to react and be really um, behind behind the eight ball. So that's all from us. What we did think we would do now, Fano, is that we're just going to take her for a, for a bit of a tour. Uh, there's some things that we want to talk to you about, particularly in terms of the work that our team have been doing, supporting COVID positive families all Christmas. Uh, they have been using Fitiki Whātua, which is our supermarket, to be able to make sure that they've got all of the access to all of the things that they need to. And we can't take our foot off that pedal. We need to make sure, even with Omicron, that we are ready to be able to act. And so we're um, looking forward to being able to, to share that with you. Kia ora tā. Oh, kia ora everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I just think a couple of introductory comments and then we'll open up for questions. You'll see I have Minister Hinare here. So, if you'd like an update um, on Tom, we'd be happy to provide that as well. As you'll know, we've already had the Orion depart. Its arrival across the airspace uh, surrounding Tonga is imminent, uh, and we're, of course, preparing for the C-130 to also uh, depart uh, uh, today in order to make uh, drops of provisions to Tonga, regardless of what the airport situation is looking like. But happy to take questions on that. Uh, as for the visit um, here today, today is another uh, milestone day in the vaccination campaign here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, as you can see over the course of the summer, through extraordinary hard work and through a plan that we have been very deliberate around, New Zealanders have had the break that we had hoped that they would get. Um, but we know that with Omicron, it is a case of when, not if. And that is why the booster campaign is just so critical. Uh, as of today, um, New Zealanders are able to book their boosters online. They've been able to receive their boosters since the beginning of January, and over half of the New Zealanders eligible for a booster, so those who received their second dose uh, four months or more ago, uh, over half of those individuals have now had their booster. We're encouraging all eligible New Zealanders to please go and get your booster as soon as possible. The traffic on the website has been good. Today, 66,000 people have made a booking uh, as at midday um, today. Uh, to give you a point of comparison, my rough recollection is that in days prior, it's been more like 12,000, so a good increase in uptake. Of course, today is also the day that our five to 11-year-olds can also, on the advice of our experts, receive a specific COVID-19 vaccine that is specific two children a paediatric dose. Uh, we do have here today uh, the expertise of Dr. Jin Russell, so if you have any further questions on the um, uh, program for children, please do feel free um, to let us know. We'll be happy to hand over to her as well. For children, of course, they are able to be booked in now via Book My Vaccine. Uh, and I can't distinguish between those 66,000 between people receiving a booster or for children being booked. But what I can tell you is from upstairs, we've heard that whānau are coming in to get both their booster and to bring their children in to be vaccinated as well. And I hope that we see families make the most of that opportunity too. As today is the first day, we did hope that we would see strong demand. And it is pleasing to see that we've had people lining up before vaccination centres have opened in order to be the first through the door. Where we see that extra demand, we'll move very quickly to make sure that we've got extra support in there to meet that extra demand, but you'll see that some of those lines have cleared very quickly as we've identified that extra need. But overall, pleasing to see people turning out today to get that extra protection against Omicron. A final word, um, this week of course we'll be meeting with health officials which of course we'll be working over the summer period on Omicron plans and preparation. Uh, what I expect is over the coming weeks to continue to share with you 
uh, some of the additional preparation that's been done over and above all of the work that we did on Delta for the specific uh, issue of Omicron and what it represents. We have the ability to learn from other nations and see the impact of the way that Omicron is behaving and prepare ourselves for that. So that will mean altering up some of the things that we do, particularly over testing, isolation and contact tracing. We'll look to share those plans over the coming weeks. But for now, happy to take questions. So, so the travel requirements for Auckland are now, if they're gone, what yes. does that mean now? Going back to that, people can just get out? Yes, well, as, as you can see, over the summer period, uh, we put in place additional protections to make sure that we were easing those borders as safely as we could. But you'll see that uh, through the remarkable efforts of our health uh, workforce, our public health teams, through vaccination and through restrictions, we've managed to get Delta down to extraordinarily low levels. That means the risk posed by altering that border now uh, is, is very low. Uh, we are in the right place now to remove those requirements. Are you, are you aware of any new cases of Omicron in the community today or no. to that confirmed case? So all of the testing that we've uh, undertaken around our uh, MIF worker have thus far come back negative. We do have additional um, contacts that we're continuing uh, to test. Those mostly relate to a bus, uh, bus uh, routes that the individual travelled on. Uh, she was wearing her mask at the time. Um, and those are the additional testing that is still um, yet uh, to be returned. But it is very encouraging to see that the close contacts, and particularly the household members, have returned negative tests thus far. Our uh, experts are calling for a revised alert level system should we get an Omicron outbreak using things like stay at home orders for non essential workers, limits on high risk settings such as bars and nightclubs. Would you move us back into an alert level setting or take some of those measures from an alert level setting while we're in a traffic light system? The traffic light system was designed to deal with uh, surges, outbreaks and of course to pick up uh, the impact of different variants as well. So all of the work that we did had that in mind. What we have already indicated is that if we have Omicron in the community we would look to move into red settings as a way of trying to slow down the spread. Now keep in mind that brings in gathering limits, it uses masks, social distancing, and also has special requirements on the way that hospitality operates. People must be seated and separated, for instance. So all of those measures are all designed to try and slow down the spread of a variant like Omicron. Some of the experts are saying that won't fully work because the current um, alert level settings, the current traffic light settings, only catered for our double dose of vaccination that doesn't encompass everyone having a booster shot and that's required to help fight Omicron. Will you make some changes in to the, the current vaccination passes? Currently our vaccination passes uh, do not have the booster uh, set within them. Uh, it is an option we have kept open, but right now the most important message for us to share uh, is to everyone, it's fantastic to have two doses, but for Omicron, we know the evidence tells us that you will have greater protection with a booster against Omicron. It reduces the chance of severe illness and hospitalisation. Uh, half of eligible New Zealanders have gone out and got their booster. We're now encouraging everyone, please don't wait it is incredibly important that we prepare as much as we can. When is our, um, when is our modelling saying we're going to get an outbreak of uh, Omicron? There's, there's, no, there's no firm way to be able to establish how long our border measures are able to hold. Uh, course, some have made some estimates, but they are just that. They're estimates, as far as I can tell, based on uh, the ability that we had to hold Delta and the relative case numbers of Omicron. Um, so we had made alterations to our managed isolation system to add extra layers of precaution. We're using N95 masks. We're looking at increasing um, the rate of testing for our workers. Uh, we're doing what we can, but I think it would be wrong for us to assume that those border measures will be sufficient. At some point, we will see Omicron in the community. Is there a, is there a period that the ministry is working to that we're at least expecting? We should that? always assume at any time. And so I would say to everyone, assume at any time. It is a very imprecise science. Um, and of course, you've seen some modelers make, make, make judgments, and you've seen them in the public before. But I think everyone would say, prepare now.
Prime Minister, on Tonga, um, we've heard from the National Marine Weather in American Samoa there's been another eruption from the volcano in Tonga. What will this mean for the Orion? Will it be able to land? You know, at, the, at the moment, of course, uh, what uh, the Orion is doing is, is a reconnaissance. Uh, it is, as are the Australians, uh, looking to undertake an assessment uh, from the air uh, of the outer islands in particular uh, and then, of course, provide that information uh, to the people of Tonga and Tongan authorities. Uh, for the C-130, we're of course undertaking planning to enable drops to be undertaken regardless of the status of the airport. Ash cloud um, does pose a risk. Um, the view on departure was that they would be able to undertake that, that overflight reconnaissance though and provide that really critical information back. I understand that uh, on the ground, of course, that Tonga has also now by sea uh, dispatched out to the other islands to make an assessment. That's that's what I've been advised. And with the lack of communication, at what point will the Defence Force just send naval vessels to Tonga? Yeah, so we've already, of course, uh, sent um, uh, the uh, Orion. Uh, we're looking to send a C-130 today, regardless. Uh, we do have uh, communication by satellite phone, uh, so we are getting back critical information that's helping with the planning. Uh, what's crucial, of course, is the C-130 will be able to meet immediate supply needs, but having a wider assessment will enable us for a marine vessel to make sure that we have on board uh, is all of the equipment that may be required. And so having that bit of extra information and the overflight reconnaissance will make sure that we're well prepared for that. I might ask the uh, Minister of Defence to speak to that as well. Our provisions are well underway to make sure planning for our Navy vessel and an imminent deployment, but as the Prime Minister's mentioned, making sure we have the necessities on board to make sure that Tonga can recover as best as it can. And that can only come with the right information from Tonga. Uh, communications are limited, but we're confident with the limited communications and the work of the Orion in partnership with the Australian uh, Defence Force, who are both doing surveys of the area at the moment, will have a far greater assessment of the need uh, of those places uh, in and around Tonga. From my understanding, in Nuku Alofa is uh, it's coming back into operation again. Power is being restored to large parts of Nuku Alofa, but of course we know that there are needs such as water and other things, which is why I think the Hercules uh, an imminent departure uh, and planning for that is important to make sure that we can get urgent needs there like water. Uh, and the beauty about that is once we can establish that, we can continually fly backwards and forwards with our refugees. Minister, can you give Fano a bit of a time frame around um, when they might be able to touch base with loved ones? Oh look, I don't have a time frame on the connection cable. I know that some uh, Fano have, uh, one way or other, have found the connection and are reporting to us and other officials about what they're hearing on the ground, but I can't have a certain time on that. Minister, Iwi leaders want to help Tonga. What, what can they do to help Fano in Tonga? Uh, first, thank you uh, to all of the iwi and community groups who have stood up and are wanting to help Tonga. I take the words of uh, my colleague, uh, Minister Seal, uh, who says there's a requirement here for a little bit of patience as we start to coordinate the response that's required in Tonga, because uh, all of the response that comes here must be directed to where it's needed the most. So we just ask for a little bit of patience and hopefully we can come to iwi and community groups very shortly to say this is the best way you can help. Mm. Tahai <laughs> Angati Fatu, Kafatu, Wataki Watata Fatu.
ことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのことのこと
um, our message instead would be the best way to prepare for the reopening of schools would be to bring children to being vaccinated. So I just really encourage um, families, caregivers, uh, to use the opportunity now before schools reopen to do that. And we've seen images of um, people, protesters alongside uh, roads and cars lining up for vaccination centres, you know, passing out pamphlets and showing photos of, of people who have been potentially infected by, by the vaccine. So, so, so. What message do you have from I those protests? From those protests? What message would you have for those protests and also for parents who are trying to look out for their kids? Yeah, I think, you know, my overall message is uh, the same as it has always been. I still absolutely believe that we're all motivated by the same thing, and it's that we want to look after one another. But we know from the evidence, from the data, from our scientists, from our experts, the best way to look after one another is to be vaccinated, and that means receiving a booster. Uh, to family, um, we listen to our experts. And they have advised us the best thing we can do to look after children and their family is for them also to receive the vaccine. Uh, so I would just implore people, it's not about the government here, it's about what the best advice possible is telling us. Uh, we're sharing that advice, and if people have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to those medical professionals you trust. But is that acceptable when you've got people coming, you know, kids coming through to get vaccinated, doing the right thing, and they're having to, to witness this kind of Of stuff course, my preference course. would be that no one would have any barrier or obstruction to them accessing um, uh, what is ultimately um, a medical support. Uh, so, of course, we'll, of course, the police ultimately are the ones that um, uh, help ensure that places are safe. Yeah, yeah, I'll come. I'll come. I'll try and canvas to those who won't go in. Then you don't mind. I'll try and take maybe two or three more because um, my booster awaits. Who did I have here? Just um, back on boosters. How yeah. are you confident that vaccination centres will be able to keep up with demand? Absolutely. So what we've seen is demand for boosters between the, uh, the 41 to 47,000 mark. Uh, you will have seen at the height of the vaccination campaign, we were hitting 90,000 a day. So we absolutely have the capacity. In fact, we would be asking people uh, to increase the demand because we are ready. Just a question perhaps from Minister oh, Do you mind if I just come here, I'll mop up those over and then I might finish. Uh, what's your expectation and comments on vaccine booster and the children age 5 to 11 years old vaccine within Chinese community in Odella, sorry, New Zealand? Yeah, my, my message to our Chinese community uh, would be the same as to everyone. You know, these vaccines are free, they're accessible to everyone, our experts have endorsed their use. Um, please take the opportunity to receive a booster uh, today and the same for children from five upwards. Uh, we have always listened to the science uh, in our work on this pandemic and you can see the results. We have some of the lowest case numbers, hospitalizations and deaths in the world. It served us well and will continue to do so. Is it too interesting? So, uh, DHBs go through a process to ensure that they are able to administer vaccines. So it's simply, you know, when they put their applications in, and then DHBs have become a process that, for the most part, and it's been a process all the way through, uh, for the most part, those have moved through very quickly, so I don't imagine there will be issue for us. The rapid antigen situation and the allegedly involving Clark, can you confirm it and also just comment on it? I, I think, look, everything that uh, is to be said has been, um, he's made an apology, and uh, I think that really covers everything. Was it too it's hard to get rapid antigen? Was it appropriate to post yourself here to express concern about the situation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, kia ora, look, and I apologise if my picture offended anyone. What was advertised on that picture too was that I encouraged people to tune in to the 3pm. Uh, which was where the Prime Minister, myself, and Minister Seal gave more details and more updates on the situation in Tonga. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, look, do you want an opportunity to perhaps, because I'll have to go and do some booster paperwork, do you want an opportunity perhaps for any questions to Dr. Russell while I do that? Would that be useful? Why not? Well, Doctor, sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 I'll just give that opportunity and then I'll go and do thanks, some Thank you. For those that don't know Dr. Jan Russell, she's um, the paediatrician at Starship Hospital. So Jan has been working with us on the paediatrician rollout in Auckland. 
So she's already done a round of media this morning. Thank you, Jen. But if you've got any other questions about the pediatrician rollout, just have them out. What yeah, is how concerned are you about um, the Pharmacon does get out of the school working with getting children vaccinated? How concerned are you for it? In general, COVID-19 has shown itself to be a less severe illness in children. And one dose of the Pfizer vaccine, in adults at least, has shown actually quite good protection against hospitalisation um, while we're waiting for that second dose. And so I think we're getting through a lot of children, a lot of children making their first dose has been well protected. I know it's early doors, but what have you seen this morning and what kind of what improvements perhaps have you seen that could be made in the coming days with? In terms of children getting vaccinated and the practical just, aspects of just that? Just around the, yeah, the fundamentals of it and how it's been rolling out this morning. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, a lot of vaccinators have been trained in how to especially help children cope because that's actually a major part of that. So parents can make a decision for their children to be vaccinated, but we need to help children feel comfortable. When we go upstairs, you know, you'll see that this the campus space is really child friendly. It's really important that as a parent, if you're getting your child vaccinated, that you yourself are able to stay calm and talk them through it. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about that, those practical aspects of your life. Yeah, so would you encourage them to maybe stay away from the drive throughs if they can and maybe go to somewhere like like a you know, centre like this, which is more family friendly? There are a lot of children and families that I look after who actually prefer to go through drive through and that's just because some kids like the comfort of being in the car and the snugness of the car seat and they don't have to get out. But a good idea is to talk to your child in advance and see what would, what would work best for them. Give your children the kind of options that are sensible, like they can choose which arm to, to they want to have, they might want to bring a, a soft toy, they might want to sit on your lap or you can give them a beer hack if they're very small. Um, but uh, in general, um, children seem to be doing very well. What plans are in place to ensure our um, Māori and Pacific Samari here are not behind us? This is a, a really critical priority, you know, as we've also advocated that we have an equitable vaccine rollout this time for children. I think we're using now a vaccine network that is um, experienced in rolling out vaccines. We're also seeing Fano bring themselves in for booster shots and also their children too. It will be important to be able to use school sites where possible. That just makes sense because research has shown that if you open up school sites, it reaches the hardest to reach communities and it will make the most equitable vaccine law. And having said that, no one's child is going to get vaccinated without their permission by going to school. So that decision still lies with families. Well done. Very simple. Thank you very much. No, thank you. I'll just make it all official. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just sitting now, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it was just as easy as the other two. If you're... That's my summary. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure. Probably, how many have you done today? Oh, I've lost count. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks everyone. I think that's probably. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you.